Well, this morning as we uh, go into Luke chapter 20, beginning in verse 20, uh, we're going to see really uh, what many would agree is the most political statement that Jesus ever makes in his earthly ministry. Uh, and I think we could say that that uh, that's that's fitting the situation Jesus finds us in, finds himself in. Uh, these religious leaders are actually going to be tricking him uh, with a political question to try and trip him up and get him into trouble. And of course, if you uh, are not living under a rock, you can clearly see that that politics today is is dividing everybody, every group, dividing families, dividing churches, dividing friendships. And politics are, are divisive always, but especially in times that we live in now. Um, but uh, uh, Jesus is going to take that political divisiveness and teach us uh, something profound and uh, uh, life-changing, really, if it's, if it's something we can truly devote ourselves to. So join me in Luke chapter 20, verses 20 to 26. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said, so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through, through their duplicity and said to them, Show me an denarius, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what they said, said, and said there in public, and astonished by his answer, they became silent. Well, so a little bit of, of context here. The, the Roman coin, the denarius that Jesus asks for, would have had a picture of Caesar's face on it and the words inscribed, Tiberius Caesar, Augustus son of the divine Augustus. Now this, this phrase, we can't get into it now, but this phrase is dripping with, with uh, worship of Caesar and political um, overtones and uh, virtually everything about it would be opposed to the Jewish faith and, and the, the, the thought of even carrying this coin, let alone paying taxes to this Roman government, was distasteful at best, but, but, but uh, uh, earth-shattering and, and leading to questions of faith and obedience for a devout Jewish person. So this is not just a trap. But it's a legitimate question that many people in the first century would have had. So what does Jesus do? Jesus takes this trap and this political question and uses it to teach the crowd and us what it means to really follow God. We have to remember that uh, Jesus in no way is calling us to oppose government. You remember Excuse me, the Apostle Paul helps us understand our role as submissive citizens in Romans 13, and Peter helps us in 1 Peter chapter 2 with the same realities of what it is to be a good Christian citizen. Uh, we're to be involved in our government and, and, and involved in any way we can that doesn't um, question or our, our challenge our faith. But Jesus also wants us to remember where our allegiance truly lies, where our citizenship is really found, who we really are. He says, whose image is on the coin? And they say Caesar. So give the coin back to Caesar and give to God what is God's. Whose image are we made in? Genesis 127 tells us that we are made in God's image, male and female. We are made in the image of God. Jesus is not just saying, go ahead and pay your taxes. He's saying, pay your taxes to Caesar and give your life to God. Give Caesar your, this temporal stuff that doesn't really mean anything. Be a good citizen, but give your life and your, your, your true devotion 
to God. We can even uh, look Philippians 3 verses 20 uh, and 21 reminds us explicitly, Paul tells us, that our citizenship is not here on earth, but in eternity. That means that every decision we make, whether personal, uh, corporate, family decision, political decision, social decision, career decision, every decision we make, financial, emotional, uh, social, friendship, every decision we make is subject to God's authority. And everything that we say and do should declare that we are God's children, created in His image, devoted to His way of life, and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, so what about the government? You have a higher power. Now, we can't get into everything that this means for our lives, but let me just give one uh, practical reality and, and application for us here. We are free because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Do you know that your freedom, your liberty, your ability to worship God as a Christian has nothing to do with the government around you? Yes, we do praise God for, for the fact that we can worship uh, without persecution, without, without uh, oppression and freedom in this country. But every single Christian on this planet is free to worship God. Now it may result in temporal difficulties. It may result, result in imprisonment or even death. But we are free in Christ. We are free because of what Jesus has done for us. We are free because we're made in the image of God. So what, I, what Jesus is saying to us today, what I want you to think about today, give to Caesar back what is Caesar's. But give to God what is God's. Give yourself to the one who created you, who saves you, and who sustains you. If we would truly live that way, every decision we make would be different. And I believe not only our lives, but the world around us would be turned upside down. Heavenly Father, we come before you. What, a, what an awesome privilege to be together fellowshipping in your word with your people. Father God, I pray that whatever we do, however we feel politically, socially, whatever decisions we make, that we would make it all under your authority, that we would be devoted to you, that we would worship you in the freedom that you give us, no matter the consequence or the cost, that we would be people not, uh, not marked by our politics or our preference or our friends or our position, but marked by one thing and one thing only, that we have been saved by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That we've been bought with a price and our life is not our own. That we are children of the one true God. Help us in our failure. Use us in our weakness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it is a privilege to be with you. What an honor. Ladies, don't forget that it, today is Tuesday. Uh, so don't forget to join the ladies' Bible study at 630. You can join here at church or on Zoom. So uh, uh, come check that out. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll make sure we get you hooked up with the right answers and the right person. I'll be sending that link out later on, but if you don't get it, please let me know. Uh, they would love to have you join, whether it's in person or through Zoom. Have a blessed rest of the day. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow again at 11 o'clock.